hi guys uh, in this video i want to, to discuss some changes i had to do throughout each pcv version and talk about uh, why i had to do it and in future maybe i have to do more but right now i have to, to show the changes i had done uh, till now today's sponsor is pcv way they have pcv printing service starting from five dollars you can order 10 pcvs in nine different colors here they also have 3d printing service which is very reasonable go to the third section of the website and click 3d printing service and add your own stl file choose materials and other features and get a price check out their 3d printing service and pcv printing service from the video description below so first thing you see is the ethernet port and the H, uh, and the headphone jack that is no longer present in the newer board that is the headphone jack is replaced by a USB-C port and this expansion port just moved to uh, the ethernet port location main reason for uh, removing the ethernet port and the headphone jack is each company's design for these two part is different so if i stick to uh, one company's uh, ethernet port like from te then uh, if they discontinue that um, if they discontinue that part or uh, they don't have any stock or the su sudden change of uh, price for this part then we we no longer able to solder that part same true for this headphone jack uh, why i'm saying this is because uh, for this usb-c port those uh, it doesn't matter what type of company they make uh, you can find this kind of usb port that will fit this footprint from different companies but that's not true for the ethernet jack uh, also the headphone jack uh, each company's design is different but i can buy usb-c this kinds of port from te or worth electronics or any other uh, parts manufacturing company it will fit this footprint there is more choice for usb-c port or hdmi port than for this uh, ethernet port and also the hdmi and another reason being is uh, the extra parts you need for this Ethernet jack is these two. Those are really expensive. I don't know what they call. That is to filter the port or something. Uh, so that is one reason. And last or minor reason is the space it needs. I'm having hard time to uh, designing the whole pcv in two layers so i don't have that much of a space to route this connection so i had to uh, without this ethernet port then i had more space to route this or fit more parts uh, efficiently in the whole pcb but uh, the ethernet jack you can use it from the expansion port uh there in second layer like this you can add an expansion port with the expansion port you can use the ethernet jack also the same true for the headphone jack and another change you can see with the uh, 5 volt and the 3.3 volt voltage converter that is changed in the new pcb and I tested these two and these two. The uh, older design didn't work uh, because of some connection issues or the tracing I did for the lines here. But with the newer design, it works. Both the 3.3 volt and the 5 volt regulator. And here you can see uh, these parts are for uh, I have another PCB so here you can see uh, this part is for turning off on the whole 
device and this part is for charging these two parts are for uh, USB PD connection and uh, you can see some parts are missing that was if you watch my previous videos that was to control the input for these two regulator so these two MOSFETs are supposed to change the uh, input voltage for these two uh, voltage regulator either the input from the USB-C or the battery so when you connect power to it then these two regulator directly get voltage or the power from this USB-C and instead of using the battery voltage uh, instead of using the batteries that way uh, the battery life will increase because the batteries are no, not used but uh, those two are not or that feature is not uh, working when I test it the uh, as soon as I as soon as I unplug the power the this uh, chip got fried I don't know why so in next iteration I will remove this to MOSFET and directly what will happen is the power will go to the battery and battery will supply voltage to these two regulator. Some other changes are not much that noticeable. Uh, these are the protection ICs. And also you might saw that um, you can add two kinds of batteries. Either you can use these kinds of pack, then you don't have to use this uh, circuitry here this and this you directly connect to this uh, port and you also don't need this uh, battery holder you can directly put this like here directly here and connect to this port like this or you can solder all the protections battery protection and charging and with this uh, battery holder you can use these kinds of two um, 18650 then directly connect here so what are the advantage of using this is the depth or the width of the emergency will be lower but the capacity will also be lower and the also you can use of the shelf battery you can buy it uh, from a normal store these kinds of battery and directly use them here but if you use these kinds of battery you have to buy it from a specialized store who sell these kinds of pack uh, with these kinds of uh, lead so so it's your choice what you want to use uh, here also, you can use those flat pack batteries uh, here directly. Uh, like then you can have much lower depth or much lower Z height for the mutancy. It may be you can use two pack here, then it will be the whole mutancy will be around 10 millimeter short, uh, shorter in Z height. Uh, if you watched the previous videos, uh, you saw that uh, I was using SO course from Pine64 because Raspberry Pi is non-existent right now. So here SO course goes like this. And one problem or difference between the SO course and Pine64 is the HDMI output. Uh, as of course, have only one HDMI but output, but Raspberry Pi have two of them. So the problem was, uh, as of course, HDMI output supposed to go to the uh, HDMI PCB here directly. The, but in this design, the as of course HDMI is going to this output you can see these traces should go to this hdmi and these traces should go to other side of this hdmi output that goes to this pcb if you want more details on what happened with the hdmi and dsi watch my previous video so right now i have to see what uh, i can do about uh, implementing HDMI display or DSi display for the whole mutancy version 5. 
other than that uh, this side uh, nothing changed much uh, for the previous design uh, i was using this kinds of buzzer but now i switch to this small one but also the parts the bill of material didn't change for this because you you already use this uh, transistor diode other part of the pcb so also the change was because uh, this kind of uh, buzzer is uh, twice as expensive than this kind so i had to change to this one so the cost will be lower and other than that everything is same uh, this is the esp32 that is not for Wi-Fi, that is used as a microcontroller because it has so much pins than other microcontroller also that uh, it's much like uh, twice as cheaper than other microcontroller also you can buy them it's available to buy not like other microcontroller and this is the port for programming the ESP32 and also flashing the EMCC module in the Raspberry Pi but in future uh, I will remove that feature because of this IC here you can see you need this IC to change between the USB port of the Raspberry Pi like uh, Raspberry Pi have only one USB port that USB port is used to uh, for USB connection also flashing the EMCC module but uh, this IC is hard to get also is expensive so i'm removing this support for now maybe in future i will add them but uh, right now if you have a raspberry if you right now if you want to use a raspberry pi with the emcc module embedded on it then you have to use another pcb to flush the emcc in the raspberry pi but for as i am testing everything with the aso quartz so quartz have this uh, emcc you can buy it separately and there is a usb module that you can put this emcc in the usb module and flush it directly that will show up as an sd card in your pc then flush it directly uh, whatever you whatever os you want here and then directly connect here and so also if you don't use the emcc then you can directly use the sd card as i shown in my previous videos btnc is mainly designed to use sd card not the emcc module because uh, those are not reliable after you flush so many times uh, the os if you flush the os so many times or read and write count is so low so if you have a SD card, then you can directly swap out the SD card if the SD card is uh, getting corrupted because of the bad sector on the SD card. So you have more reliability or functionality if you have used the SD card instead of buying a Raspberry Pi with EMCC module or EMCC uh, storage baked into it. If the EMCC got uh, destroyed over time, then you have no longer use of that uh, CM4. So if you are trying to build a mutant C then you should use the SD card as that will give you more flexibility and if you are using Raspberry Pi then try to buy a Raspberry Pi without the EMCC module then you can use the SD card. And this is the keyboard here that is controlled by the uh, ESP32 here and this is supposed to go to the uh, display board here then uh, this is the usb hub that gets the us one usb port from the cm4 module then make it four and one goes to esp32 another one goes to this usb port and another two is available in the sorry another one is available in the expansion port and another usb port goes to this usb c port 
so this is the Neuralink port this have i to see and uart so if you watch my previous video there i use this port to connect uh, ttl from this Pine 64 module to my pc to see uh, if it's putting all right by getting the, all the kernel messages and i use this cable so here you can see so it's just a normal USB-C cable then I got all the pins here and that is one is voltage, ground, uh, T plus, uh, TX, RX then I to see STL and STA yeah that was really handy to debug uh, the ASO course module if the connection is correct or not and this is the switch for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and uh, some other things in the ASU course. And this is for charging the batteries here. And uh, you can use, uh, if you are using this USB PD module or USB PD IC, then you can use any USB PD to charge the, uh, charge the batteries. But mind that, so if you are using USB PD, then five volt won't work. So you need a actual, so you need a USB PD capable charger or battery bank to charge the meet and see. So overall, right now, everything is working except the HDMI from the SO quartz. That's supposed to go to the display board but right now it's not working watch my previous videos for detailed information about that right now i am working or supposed to work in dsi see how it goes then i will give you guys an update in the meantime i will work on mutant w the smartwatch i want to add more features into it so i will work on the software side of that smartwatch so maybe in future videos you will see the you will see the meet and w instead of meet and see but in the background i will be working on the dsi and order new pcbs with the help of pcb way and hopefully you guys will check out uh, the pcb way and order your pcbs from pcb way and hopefully you can order this meet and see version 5 when it's finished from pcb way yeah so see you guys in next video thank you for watching